All right, everybody. We're here doing a thing with the thing with the thing. Uh, we're trying something so many out. Things. Me and Robert, uh, I just started playing Magic the Gathering Arena, and I really like it. And I was telling Robert about it, and Robert was like, I think I'll try it, and we'll try real live magic, too. So, uh, so we're going to make this stream disappear. <laughs> so oh, wait, it's not that kind of magic? My bad. No, no. Uh, so... We'll, we'll go over what uh, Robert has gotten today, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about the implications of it a little bit. So, uh, because of the implications. Implications. All right, so uh, go ahead and okay. take it away, Robert. All right, let me just show you all how nuts I went today with my <laughs> with the magic stuff. So I got a gift card. Um, unfortunately, I left it at home. But <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, it should all even out in the end, right? So I bought this deck box. I don't even know how much it cost. Maybe it was $2, this little ultra pro deck box um i bought two packs of these matted sleeve thingies at about seven bucks a pop um i got a planeswalker deck uh nisa genesis mage and uh from hours of hour of devastation and i got guilds of ravnica how do you say this Vraska planeswalker deck i picked yeah, up about 10, pa right. 10 packs of guilds of ravnica and while I was at the comic book store, I went to two different stores. While I was at the second one, the guy there was like, hey, do you even play Magic? I was like, honestly, dude, I'm, I'm just buying stuff <laughs> at this point because I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, oh, cool. We have these things for new players. So he hooked me up with these two bad boys. So I got these for free, which was pretty cool, seeing as how I, I spent so much money on things I have no clue about what I'm doing with. <laughs> so that was really awesome. So I appreciate that. Um, so um, I guess I'll just jump into the Hour of Devastation yeah. with Nisa, the Genesis Mage. And the thing about these Planeswalker decks, I know people are probably going to be like, ah, oh, that's terrible, blah, 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 blah. Me and Robert are just getting into it. Yeah, I own zero magic cards. These will be the first ones. And his roommate's going to be upset at him, his old roommate. My Oh, my old roommate was trying to get me to play this game for months. He moved down here, or he moved up here from Florida in January and was super into Magic, and or he used to play it a lot. And uh, he's like, dude, I got so much stuff. I'll teach you how to play. I was like, all right, man, yeah, we'll play, we'll play, we'll play. We never got around to it. He just moved out last month. <laughs> and uh, Chris, Chris decided he wanted to play Magic online and get us addicted to this new crack. So, um yeah, I think it's really you just did it as a slight to him. You're like, okay, he's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was cool, man. Yeah, um, you're really so trying to get both of us to play when I went over there, and he he finally got into Dice Masters because me and you're like, no, nah, we're playing Dice Masters, bro. That's all we got. That's all we got. All got so what is that? Uh, What's that? Planeswalker Walker read. So Nisa Genesis Mage, Planeswalker Nisa. She's what's that? Five, and then she has two little broccolis. Is that what that is? Broccoli energy. Uh, it's Good forest. Job, oh, okay, forest. So what is the yeah, five? It's the green. The, it's green mana. You have to produce green mana in order to cast her. Okay, so I need five non-colored and then two green. Is that what that means? It's I need seven. That five of any color. Mm -hmm. A five of any color, but I, two. I also need two green, so seven total. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So and then how a, planeswalkers work? Uh, real quick, just a uh, real quick aside. Planeswalkers are different from creatures or anything else in Magic. They're permanents that stay on the battlefield. And on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a number. That number is their loyalty. So basically, how Planeswalkers work is they're friends from a specific timeline in a specific plane uh, of Magic's history. And what you're doing is you're basically, when you cast them, you're calling for their help, right? So then they'll say, yeah, sure, I'll help you. So each of their abilities will either help you or hurt the opponent, which again helps you. So what you do is you add loyalty counters or subtract loyalty counters, depending on what you want to do with the ability. The bottom ability, the third, is usually called their ultimate ability or their final ability, where it takes either all or most of their uh, loyalty counters. The way to get rid of Planeswalkers now is you either have to have a card that deals damage directly to the Planeswalker, or you have creatures that can attack the Planeswalker, which is separate from attacking you. Interesting. And you can only spend as much loyalty as you actually have. Correct. So you can't, if Nisa were to come in with five loyalty counters, you can't spend, you can't ultimate her last ability, which is seven, I think. 
Yeah. Uh, her loyalty is five. I What's her ultimate? The the oh, okay, so it's it's plus two, minus three, minus ten is the bottom one. So you gotta have minus 10. ten. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Do you want me to read her abilities? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so the, yeah, the top one that says plus two says untap up to two target creatures and up to two target lands. That sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's good or not. But um, The minus three says target creature gets plus five, plus five until end of turn, which that sounds pretty awesome. Um, and then the minus ten. Look at the bottom ten cards of your library. You may put any number of creature and or land cards from, from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That sounds super good. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. So wait, how, what's the max amount of monsters you can have in the field or creatures? There's not. There's not a max? There's no maximum. <clears throat> so you can have any number of creatures on the field. Your max hand size is always going to be seven. Gotcha. So at the end of every turn, Whoop. during your end step, you discard your hand down to hand size. Now with Planeswalker Loyalty, again, you can only activate it once per turn and activate it during uh, a sorcery, which means that you can't have any other spells or abilities on the stack while activating the Planeswalker's uh, ability. Okay. Well, that's cute. So, what you do is, when you play her, she enters the battlefield with five token, five loyalty counters. Then, you can either use two of them, I mean, she gains two, so you add two to activate her first ability, or you lose, how many is the second one? Three. Oh, wow. You lose three to activate her second ability. Basically, with Planeswalkers, the strategy is is have them out in the field and have other creatures or other ways to protect them until you can use their final ability. So then it becomes sort of like, again, it's, it's a somebody coming in to help you. It's a historic character coming in to help you in your battle. So basically, they're treated as being another player. All right. I don't want to rip this box, but I feel like it's going to happen. Okay, there. It probably happened. Um, so let's move on to the other stuff now. All right. So we got two packs in here. One pack. Oh, that guy's weird. There's one. One pack from the old sets. And then here goes. Oh, there's. One. Holy crap. Oh. Okay, there's two and a little booklet thingy. Uh, a quick Is reference that a poster? guy. Yeah, the it's yeah it's a deck. Oh, here's a reference. It, guy. I mean, sorry. It's a build. It's a guide to sh to explain how it works. All right. It's a scroll. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Well, I kind of want to see it. I'm sorry, guys. I've never seen one before, so. No, that's fine. Take your time, man. Cool. Okay. Burn it. There we go. <laughs> it explains who the character is, where she comes from, um, and then how her deck is used, how it's preferred that you use the deck, basically. And it has a pin up, so, you know, you get to see her kind of nude. So Yeah, sweet. <laughs> the Genesis Mage. All right, cool. So you want to look at the cards it's, on the inside of this a... of this bad boy? What is this? Yeah. Why is it sideways? Because it has dual abilities. So aftermath cards. They work. The first ability, which is right side up, uh, the first card or the first spell part of it, is what you initially cast to get into your graveyard. Then the part that's office facing opposite is the part you can cast during your turn. While it's in your graveyard, or as an this instant, whenever. But this has to be in the graveyard. Correct. So that first part, mm -hmm. which says scry two or three. It's three. Okay, scry three. Oh so my god, scry that. three? Yeah, you cast that, and then after it's in your graveyard, if you have enough mana, which is three and a green, you can uh, then four. cast that from your, or four and a green, you can then mm -hmm. cast that card from your graveyard, and then you exile it afterwards. So it says aftermath. Look at the bottom card of your library. You may put it onto the battlefield if it's a creature card. If you don't, put it into your hand. <clears throat> so then you banish this card, and then you have that card in the field, or whatevs. Interesting. Yeah. Do you want me to? I don't think we need to read them all. Yeah, I don't think we do either. Uh, I'm more interested in the packs, but I. I uh, it does. It, like the thing about these planes, uh, Walker decks. There's they're they're okay. They're good enough for new players, which me and Robert are. But you can build upon them to make them a little bit better with other cards that you get, and that's kind of the point of them is is a jumping off point. 
Yeah, and, this is cool. When, yeah. when this card dies, draw a card. That sounds good. Yeah. And it's a one and a, and a broccoli, so that's awesome. <laughs> what on broccoli? You're killing me. So this is a broccoli and a teardrop. It killed someone. Yeah, so you, I guess you pay three generic, one... Dude, your camera's out of water. focus so bad. Is it bad? I oh, can't see. It's all right. Um, Do autofocus. I think it is on autofocus, honestly. This, it's I'm like, using my new computer, and mm. nothing is like set here. Let's see. It's like soft porn, kind of like mm. out of focus. All right. Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. One moment, please. One With moment. this bird, I like the flying effect because it's basically unblockable unless you have flying, right? Or and something has reach. Flyers or reach. Yeah, that's right. Reach or flyers can block it. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, guys. My uh, software's not loading. Uh, let's see. Pouncing Cheetah has Flash. What does Flash mean? Uh, it means you can cast flash it at any point. That, yeah, you can cast it at any time. So how magic works is you have uh, different phases and different steps during your turn. Um, what we generally tend to uh, treat, how we tend to treat creatures is, is that you have to wait until the stack is empty. And the stack is a matter of like priority prioritizing spells so mm -hmm. uh creatures artifacts enchantments and sorceries are all done without any other spell or ability resolving so that means that they kind of they kind of set the pace they kind of create the the stack once you cast them um and so then people can respond to them with abilities or instincts things so like flash gives you that extra um you know to cast it during your opponent's turn instead of having to cast it during your turn Gotcha. All right, I'm just trying to figure out how to get my camera to focus here. Don't worry about it. Honestly. I don't think it's going to get better. I think you're right. So I've posted this thing all over the place, so if people... People will probably be jumping in at different points and be like, what the hell are you guys doing? So <laughs> uh, It's just worse. You might as well just go back to autofocus. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. Right there. there right right there. Oh, dude, that's okay. so good. All right, cool. So um, there we go. Um, Avid Reclaimer. Let's see. They seem like they're really cheap to play, too, is the thing. Like, you don't have to have a lot of, what is it, mana? Is that what yeah. that is out there? Yeah. Or lands? Like, this one only costs three. Well, that's you're at cool. the bottom of your curve right now where it's going to be the lower cost and then at the. Oh, that's true. I yeah. Know five cost. Trample. Ooh, that's that's a, that's not five cost. That's six cost, bro. Oh, six cost. My Four bad. generic and two broccolis, as you say. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot of vegetables, dude. Dude, you gotta eat them. There's four of these guys in here. So you have max four, right? Of each yeah. card. Yes, sir. Woodland stream. Dual lands. That's actually really good. Uh, how do you know it's a dual land? Because it's uh, not. It's a non-basic land. It's not actually a dual land because they have the different types, but this can tap for either or. Yeah. Uh, so does this go like in the area like this thing down yeah. at the bottom? You just place this down there? Yeah. Uh, when it goes into the oh, field, okay. it most likely goes in tap, so you can't use the mana from it right away. But uh, if you need a specific spell and you only have like that one and like all blue, you, you have one of the force that you can use with that. Gotcha. Unsummon. These are like magic cards, like actual. These are magic cards, cards right? Yeah. Does it say sorcery? It says unsummon instant. Okay, so it's an instant card. So uh, the thing about instants, uh, you can cast those at any point. You don't have to wait for them on your turn. So you can do it in response to what your opponent is doing. Interesting. Okay. So there's um, that. Sorcery, oh, you have to wait till your turn to cast it, and it goes in the queue, like Joe said. So I could play this card straight from my hand. Like if you if you say I'm gonna whatever I don't know what it's called, set a card or whatever, or summon, summon. A card, yeah. summon a card. I can just be like, no, you're not. Yeah, so as long casting, as you have the mana. You're they, you're treated as wizards casting spells, so that's what you you say. I'm attempting to cast, or I'm going to cast. Because gotcha. they can counterspell you. This costs one teardrop, one murder. One murder. Um, this costs three, um, and I give my creature plus one, plus zero. 
It deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. Is that instant? It, instant. Mm -hmm. So let's say you attack, uh, um, and they don't they don't block something. Mm -hmm. If you could get a win or uh, get an alpha strike, you can cast that to give it plus one. Granted, it's not really that great plus one, but some stuff gets buffed by you just casting stuff. Yeah. And then it says it deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent control. So if they decide not to block, I can still do damage yeah. to another creature. That's pretty good. Yeah, and you put it on your biggest, biggest, or uh, something that would possibly just kill the th uh, kill the thing if they block it. And then they're like, no, nah, I don't want to have that go away. It still goes away. Wow, this is a pretty cool one. So this, this spring sorcery says search your library for a basic land card, put it into your battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library, and then... I guess the second part of it. Do I have to pay six while it's in my graveyard to use this? Yes. Wow. Okay. After math, um, draw two cards. That's pretty good. That's really I good. Guess. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's that's super good, honestly. Um, that's, so that's, that's that planeswalker. Cards. I think that's a good planeswalker deck, honestly. It seems like it's pretty cool. Let's see a if few, fit in here. few tweaks here. And, it, it'll fit sixty sleeved cards. That little box. Nice. So. All right, so let's open these packs and see if we got anything good. Yeah? You want to do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. E -e 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 -e. All right. You sound like a dolphin. Are you a dolphin? E -e 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 -e. <laughs> oh, I got a camel. I got a camel. It's a solitary camel, though. All right, it's a creature. It costs three uh, cat buttholes, apparently. What is it, a sun? That, that's a uh, planes. Planes? Just planes? Yeah. It's white mana. Yeah. <laughs> So it's two and then that little sun thingy. Yeah. What is the lifelink? Has lifelink as long as you control a desert or there is a Ooh, desert card in the graveyard? That's super good. So lifelink, basically, whatever damage it does, it heals you for that. Oh, nice. Okay. That's pretty awesome. Open fire. Open fire deals three damage to target character or target creature or player. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. So that's removal. All right, uh, Tragic Lesson. Draw two cards and discard a card unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. Okay. Hmm. Moaning Wall. It's a zombie card, Chris. Ooh. Uh, so what's that? Is that Black Man of the Little Skull? Is yeah. that what that means? Yeah, yeah. So it's three. It's a defender. It says Cycling 2. Then two. Discard this card. Draw a card. Joe, what's Cycling mean? And it I... says Defender. <clears throat> I don't know what that means. Cycling is an ability... That you can discard the card while it's in your hand. So you can only cycle <laughs> cards from your hand. You're discarding them to draw another card from the top of your library. And also, a lot of cards that cycle have a bonus effect when you cycle them. Yeah. So what is it says Defender Cycling 2. So, what so is Defender defending? means that they can only block. They can't wow. attack. Any right. creature with Defender cannot attack. Unless gotcha. another card modifies it. Because I know there's a few ones that modify it. Cool. So cycling means that while you have it in your hand, if you don't have enough mana to cast it outright, or you just want to wait for a better opportunity to get another card, you basically just pay the cycling cost, discard it, it goes to your graveyard, and then you draw a card from the top of your library. Mm. Oh, that's okay. really good. So do I have to pay two mana to, to discard it? Is that what the two in the little circle means? Yes, that's what the two means, is you can pay two mana of any color. Gotcha. So whenever you have that colorless symbol, or whenever you have that two, three, or whatever, and it's it's that uh, blank kind of thing, mm -hmm. that's what you pay generic mana. I mean, you can pay one of any, any color. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, here goes Bitterbow Sharpshooter. It is a creature. It has ving Vigilance and Reach, I guess. I don't know what Vigilance means. Yeah. Vigilance, normally creatures, in order to attack um, during your turn, they have oh, to tap. You have to turn them so these are the ones that come into the field and it's it doesn't have it's automatically ready to go, right? The, that's no, cool. no, 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 that's what? not it. So what oh. it is is oh. vigilance says is it doesn't have to tap to attack, meaning you can block with it on the next turn because you can't block with tapped creatures. Ah. So when you attack it, you you tap it to the side. It's still so it's still tapped, but you can block with it even though it's tapped. It's no, not no, no, tapped. No. You don't. Oh, tap. it doesn't get tapped at all. You don't. It doesn't tap to attack. So basically, you have a blocker. Gotcha. Okay. And you're not punished for attacking with it. Sweet. Torment of Venom. 
put three minus one minus one counters on target creatures. Controller loses three life unless he or she sacrifices another non-land permanent or discards a card. Gilded Ceridon. That's a beast. Attacks if you control the desert or there's a desert card in your graveyard. Target creature can't block this turn. I'm just going to fly through these guys. If you see something that looks interesting, let me just know. Just read off the title and Joe will say if it's good or not. Desert of the Indomitable. So you're using cards from from two years ago. You're you're looking Damn. at cards from two years ago, so they are no longer standard legal. Gotcha. So okay. might as well just the relevance push them up. here. Yeah, yeah, the relevance here is pretty much nil. Oh, this, this However, has death touch. In each of the fifteen packs, you have you have three uncommons and a rare or mythic rare at the end of the pack, just before the token and land slot. So what you need to do is every time you open a pack. There's your rare Hour of Promise, which is pretty good. It does land acceleration and gives you two zombies if you pull out deserts um, from your lands. Anyway, so Aww. basically, uh, yeah, you flip a, you flip your pack over to the back end of it, and then oh, if you, you want to just go for the back. rare first. Okay. And, and yeah. The only thing is, Joe, if, it, if there's a card with the same text and all that, it's legal though, right? What do you mean? Like if there's a a new card from the new sets that ha that have the same title, there. And... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, if there's so those are reprints. Yeah. So for example, shock, shock has been re reprinted in this standard cycle for three sets now. So it's basically one red mana, deal two damage to target creature or player. Yeah, I don't so think there's going to be too many reprints though. There's your token. Not out of Emmentet. Let's see the token. This is the last card. Is the token? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have your land card. Proven combatant. Token. It's a zombie human warrior, Chris. Yeah, I, that's not legal in the new sets. Because <laughs> oh, there's not something that big. It's specific to that set. Uh, all right, what was this? Just flip them over right now. Those... That should be your land. Bam. Oh, oh that's, that you that's what you wanted. Oh, yeah. All right, put that off to the side. And then it this is your rare. Hour of Promise. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> that's Wait, you have two of now. Uh, that's actually and then after that are three uncommons and the uncommons are actually pretty good so those are the three uncommons they have the silver so color rarity is if it's black or non-colored uh, that, that's commons and then silver is uncommons it's always silver and then gold is rare and then uh sort of this maroon bronzes look is mythic rare gotcha all right cool well, there's um on this next one packs. on this next one you open robert the uh the planes the other planeswalker deck do yeah. not show the last card when you open the planeswalker thing put it off to the side because it has the code on the back and you don't want to show that on camera all right let me go ahead and pop these bad this bad boy open then i just ripped it open like a savage when i got it so yeah i probably should have done that because these boxes yeah but if you open it from the bottom keep... you can still salvage it eh, i'm not about that life unsalvageable this point all right throw it off to the side get this chick out i think this the art on these things are, are so awesome yeah okay if, if it there's a bottom at, there's a thing at the bottom of it yeah yeah there we go so that's cool Vraska Re regal gorgon legendary planeswalker so she has five uh loyalty as well i guess that's what that's called it's kind of a standard thing. There's there's ones that have more. There's ones that have less. So I, she says plus two. So for Planeswalker, let me let me back up. So Planeswalker decks are geared towards beginning players and making okay. sure that they have the basics of the game. What they did was, because you can still use these Planeswalker decks in a standard match at your local game store, they wanted to print something that was powerful, but not too powerful. They wound up printing something that was mediocre because... All of these Planeswalker decks, all of the named Planeswalkers are anywhere from five converted mana cost to seven converted mana cost. Which is insane. Meaning that you're you're not going to be able to play it until way later on in the game. If you're so, even able to play it. And on top of that, their ultimate abilities or their final abilities are not actually... They're not actually feasible until much later on because you have to have several turns with them being in play building up their loyalty counters. So that's something to kind of remember as kind of like a gauge to how powerful these Planeswalker decks are in relation to other Planeswalkers. 
because there's a in this guilds of Ravnica set the the other Vraska that's from not from the Planeswalker deck. She's actually very powerful. She costs two, a green and a black mana, and she comes in with four loyalty counters, and her abilities are amazing compared to this one. So you can play her quicker. You can also have more of an advantage, and her ultimate ability is just nuts. Do you so, want to read this one? W would you say that adding that one to this deck would be more, a little bit better, and tempo-wise? So yeah, you can... And when it comes to this Planeswalker decks, they also have cards that are specifically tailored to that Planeswalker as well. So they'll have an instant sorcery creature or artifact that says, if you have this specific Planeswalker, Vraska, Regal, Gorgon, in play you get this added ability. Or find such and such Planeswalker in deck, in your graveyard. Or... Yeah. You can't find that anywhere else in the sets, booster packs or uh, other theme packs. Yeah. So it actually kind of winds up helping you out a little bit more if you add one of the other Planeswalkers that are a little bit more powerful with the same name. Yes. Interesting. Uh, all right. Do you want me to read her abilities or should we just move on? We could just move on, honestly. Hers aren't that good. Hers are okay. All right, well, you can read them in the store. They're there. Uh, Jesus, a lot of... This seems like more cards than the other And one. take out the card in the back. Oh, hold on. Uh, take it off camera. Look for the code and put it off to the side. It's going to be towards There's the back. Like three cards in the back. That it's yeah. Stuff. It's okay. going to have a code. Make sure you All don't right. show that. You got it. All right. All right. Calm down. Here we go. I want you to make sure you have this. All right. Ooh, that guy's an elephant. He's an elephant man. And his ability is super good. Creature gets plus three, plus three. Why is it on there three times? What does that mean? You give three things plus three, plus three. Holy crap. So it gives you multiple choices. You can either give the same thing plus three, plus three, three times, or you can give <laughs> up to three different things plus oh. three, plus three. Yeah, so that's super good. <laughs> Rask is stone glare. Flying bats. I like that. Cost four though. That Lolth is pretty good. Lolth. Mm, crawl Rider Raider. Some more bats. Spinal Centipede. That's a super good that's a pretty good card. When you put a put a, a watch your control. Chris is looking at it from a limited perspective, as yeah. in he's done quite a few sealed and drafts, and so these cards look better in those environments because they're limited quantities. Mm -hmm. Once you get into standard, they're not that good. When because Iron you have Shell cards that give you like two for one value, or yeah. well, I'm you know, saying they just for the more powerful for this deck, it, it's actually super good. Yeah, and I mean with the Magic the Gathering Arena, that's I mean that's the only way I'm going to be playing for the most part, and going to be messing around on uh, on stream with you guys playing on camera too. But we're going to try to build a commander deck pretty soon, Joe. Is going to teach us how to play that. So, Good so I'm I, I have cards out my ears, and my wife <laughs> wants me to get rid of them. So, I figured it'd be more beneficial to have us play a nice, fun, interactive multiplayer format. And it, it really is. It's I think it's one of the best multiplayer formats I've played in any other game. Yeah, because it's just it's really good. We'll get on that on another day. All right, All right let's jump into these packs then. How about that? You want to do that? Do you want me to open mine? And just show my packs? Or show what's in mine real quick? Yeah, sure. Go for it. i got 12 packs here waiting. All right. So I went to the store today, and I got that. Joe's been telling me that if you can get the the bundle to go with it, it's the best value. After seeing it, I definitely agree. So what comes in it is a booklet. It has all the cards on there uh, in the set. Mm -hmm. Super good. And it's... I really like it. You can put it in your binder that you put the cards in with. I like that. Then this is empty. But <laughs> um, then I've already kind of opened this a little bit just to make sure everything was in there. Um, it has the same thing that's in the back of uh, Robert's thing. It just says formats of the game and uh, turn order and things like that. I kind of like that. It, it's interesting and lets you know how to play. And then it comes with... 10, um, 10 packs uh, to get started with. That's right there. And then it comes with lands, and I have four foil lands, or five foil lands, one for each of the mana uh, 
And so, so each set has a special thing that makes them different from the other. And that largely has to do with the story and the mechanics. Well, this one is the Guilds of Ravnica. There are 10 guilds, each representing um, dual color pairs. And what's so cool about these foil lands is they have the they should have the guild symbol yep. around the mana symbol, and it's really awesome. <clears throat> so yeah, Robert, do you mind if I open my lands real quick just to pull the? Oh, do it, dude. I want to see them. All right, all right. So there's only f uh, five in here that are gonna be uh, foil. So there's that one. Oh, let me turn on the light. Oh, wow, it's really bright. Okay. There we so, go. It adjusted. Nice. That looks cool. Ooh. So what they're called is they're called watermarks. And they they put the watermarks in the back of the box, text box. Mm -hmm. And these each so represent cool. the different guilds. So that is it or yeah, I think that's is it or Demir. No, that's a Demir. So you get one of each energy and that's type Boros. or whatever it's called. Yeah, you get type. one of each color because there's five colors. There's uh red, black, blue, white and green. The traditional color wheel is uh, called, we call it Wooberg because it's white, blue, black, red, green. Yeah. So yeah. whenever you write it out in mana symbol wise, because blue, you can't have blue and black starting with B, so that blue is a U. So we call it Wooberg. And the rest of these are just basic lands. So uh, it's the it's one, the one art from the uh, from the set. It's not the four different ones. So that's kind of that's kind of sucks, but it's whatever. Because uh, each each one of the sets has four different um, arts for the lands, mm -hmm. and this is just the the main one. So, um, all right. So, Robert, would you like yes. to open your packs first or me first? Um, I, I said that weird. Um, I want to open mine, honestly. I'm kind of excited to open these packs. I haven't opened anything in a while, like before today. Let me sleeve my card, my foil ones real quick, but go ahead. Uh, right. So, Joe, what's the big money one in this, set, in these, in this set? That we were talking about before with the stream start is like $200 or something like that? Um, I think he said it's uh, Exodia, the forbidden one. <laughs> no, that's not Exodia. <laughs> That wasn't it? No, okay, no. So, so you said to keep the last card off the thing, right? No, no, no. It, it, uh, that's just with the Planeswalker decks. Oh, okay. My bad. All right. So let's see. Rubble Belt Board. Rubble Belt Bar. Say that five times fast. No, thanks. Skyline Scout. Whenever Skyline Scouts, you may pay one. One, if you do, it gains flying until end of turn. Oh, yeah. The, the, last, the last five are the uncommon... Uh, rares and tokens so never happened yeah that one's kind of good <laughs> that was really kind of good target opponent reveals their hand you choose a non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it oh wow an exile they can't bring it back from the graveyard yeah oh wow you actually get to see their hand nice yeah the gong has been sounded <laughs> sorry Partheon Patrol. Partheon on oh, Patrol. Boros Locket. So that one's can what is this? accelerate your mana if you need to. Add fire or. What is the little Plane. sun looking? Plane. Necronic Wound. Hello? I'm here. Oh, okay. I guess we lost Joe. Oh, okay. Uh, Justice Strike. Mm hmm. Sprouting Renewal. Mm -hmm. Guild Mages Forum. It's okay. a land card. That could be uh, uh, any land. If you type oh. It. Nice. Golgari Guildgate. And... Oh, that's a good one. That's a good Golgari Guildgate? What does it yeah. say? Golgari Guildgate enters the battlefield tabbed. Add... Oh, well, never mind. Black and... There's one that if you... It can enter the battlefield. If you pay two life, it's untapped. That's I got an elf knight. He's a two-two with cool. vigilance. Kind of cool. Put it aside. All right. So which one of these is like the rare? It'll say at the bottom. It'll have a little R at the bottom also, and those little foil oh. things are. So guild mage's form is the rare one that has a little R rare? next to it. Yeah, it has yeah, a little yeah. R. Okay. okay. That's your rare. I'll put that off to the side. So all of these are just common then. 
Uh, no, they're not all common. There's some uncommon. Oh, there's three uncommons. That's kind of cool that they label them. Yeah. I wish they were in order in the pack, but whatever. Well, that, that land, that's a really kind of bonus thing that's really kind of good. It, it allows you to really build the deck pretty good. All right, so these are the two packs that were in my uh, my set there. So, Robert, now that noting the, the thing that I got, the, uh -huh. the bundle, are you going to get that now? Yeah, I was actually um, Super I was thinking of putting off the stream and going back with that gift card and going <laughs> and buying it. I might just stop tomorrow. We might do another one. Let's see. Yeah, and this is something we're super excited about because it's just interesting and new and we get to open stuff. Yeah, well, I like opening things. I don't like paying $4 a pack, but I like opening things. You get 15 cards Ooh. in it, so. Death Touch. Human Assassin. One cost. I like that. Yeah. Hired so they, Prisoner. Poisoner. The, the crazy thing is you could just put that out there, and even if they have a trample, which mm -hmm. it's over-crushing, uh, that thing's going to die. Yeah. Sonic Assault. That looks cool. That Minotaur does not look like he's enjoying that. Or he's, like, doing a uh, sexy dance. Yeah. Golgari Locket. Command the Storm. Deals five damage to target creature. Wow. It costs five, though. I don't Seems like expensive. that. It's not good value, I think. Yeah, that's expensive. All creatures get negative one until end of turn. What's Surveil 2? Look at the top two cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order. Yeah, so if there's something you're specifically trying to go to, you can have a Surveil deck, and a lot of times you can build stuff that gets plus one, plus one for each time you Surveil. Nice. All right. So Night Veil Predator. This is this is an un un uncommon. I'm going to put that off to the side. Sun Home Stalwart, Human Soldier. First strike. What does that mean? Uh, it's fast. Oh, so it does this damage. Okay, all right. It does this damage before your opponent does the damage. Yeah, pretty good. Ooh, we dragonauts. That's that's a really good card. Flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, we dragonauts get plus two until end of turn. Wow. Yeah. That's a cool looking card. I like the how their eyes are red. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Kind of reminds me on, uh, you've seen the, the Rick and Morty episode where he fights the president? Uh, I think so. And then, like, what these two M little mean? twins come out of the shelf and start fighting uh, Rick. What does M mean? Is that a mythic? Yeah, that's a mythic. Whoa. I got what? Aurelia Exemplar of Justice. Legendary Creature means. Angel. It says flying, and she has mentor. Whenever this creature attacks, oh. put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. Until the end of turn, that creature gets plus two, gains trample if it's red, and gains vengeance if it's white. That's super good. Dude, put that along with the Wii Dragonites. Uh-huh. Holy sm Put that off to the side. That's yeah, a myth. I'm going to put that in a sleeve here in a second. Okay. Uh, Boros Guildgate and another Elf Knight guy. What does the Boros Guildgate say? Uh, this one is it tapped? Says Boros Guildgate enters the battlefield tapped. Okay. Add, what is that, fire or planes? Red or white. That's Red yeah. or white. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. What is, so it says land gate. Is that something different than? Yeah, the there, there's, a, there's a mechanic in this set. Where uh, you can do a gate spell, which it'll it can accelerate the game a little bit. Uh, you like the uh, one of the packs you opened. It had something about uh, when you entered into the field, it does X for uh, how many gates you have in the uh, in your field. And gotcha. Those are gates. So where do I put the uncommons at? I don't know, man. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna make stacks, commons, uncommons, and everything. Else. Now we got to get new binders, bro. Oh God! Yep, you're right. But okay, I got a mythic out of my out of my planeswalker deck. That was the plane. Those two packs were out of my planeswalker set. Nice. So that's pretty good. I wish it was foil. I mean, you can't wish for it. I'll you take can't. I'll take what I get, you know. But I'm pretty. I would have been way more excited if it had foil on it. Yeah. See, the all thing right. in the um with that with that uh, bundle, it gives you a thing to hold all your cards. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. That is cool. And it gives you all the mana. Granted, you get mana in the uh, other cards, but I don't know. I didn't have, I don't have any white mana. I don't have any mana. Leapfrog. 
Lightning Frog has flying as long as you've cast an instant of sorcery spell this turn. And he has three attack. That's pretty good. Yeah. A goblin locksmith. Call the locksmith! Uh, it doesn't look like he's dealing with locks at all. Yeah, yeah, he just, <laughs> yeah. He just punches through and unlocks the door himself. That's how he gets around that. That's just efficient. Mm, Div Karen dissident, L four year. Hey Vicious Robert, rumors. if you get that uh, bundle and you get a black die, I'll take. I'll trade you the green die for the black die. All right, cool. Assistant. I don't know what any of these cards do. Ernst Wild Trooper. He looks cool. He's a zombie soldier. Ooh. Discard a creature card. Earth's Wild Trooper gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until the end of turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. That like if you have that, if you have that four. skeleton that keeps coming back. Oh my god, that's super good. Sky Knight Legionnaire, flying and has haste. What does haste do? Uh, you get to attack with it right when you uh, summon it. Sweet. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Is that the whisper uncommon? Agent. No, the uncommon. That's the bit. common. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Whisper Agent has flash. Surveil one. Candlelight vigil. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus, th plus three, plus two, and has vigilance. Wow. That's cool. All right, here goes the uncommons now. Undercity Necrolisk. Wow. So I guess you pay one whatever color. Black. Sacrifice another creature. Oh. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Undercity Necrolisk. It gains menace until end of turn. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. It can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. That's what Menace does, yeah. Nice. So that's, that's pretty good. Common. Swath Cutter Giant. Wow, he's cost six. He's a 5-5 five, five with Vigilance. Whenever Swath Cutter Giant attacks, it deals one damage to each creature defending player controls. Okay. That's cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, Rampaging Monument has Trample. It's a 0-0. Zero, zero. That's weird. Rampaging Monument enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, put a plus one counter on Rampaging Monument. So does that mean he starts with 3-3 three, three then? Yes. Okay, cool. And he goes up from there. Dude, this is, I got another Mythic. Well, this is from the uh, 10 that you bought. Yeah, so this says... Under realm light leak leak lich lich, uh, zombie elf shaman. If you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library, then put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Pay for life. Under realm, what is it? Leech lich lich gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. Indestructible it means it can't die. Okay, and only until the end of turn, and it costs me four life. Is that good? Uh, if you're trying to attack with it and they're trying to chump block to kill it, or trying to kill it, you could just do that, pay the two life, and uh, you'll still have it. Mm -hmm. So I got Celestia Guildgate um, enters the battlefield tap and add a white or green, and then a soldier token, which is 1-1. One, one. That's a Guildgate, so that's a, yeah. You might want to put the Guildgates off to the side. Yeah, I am. All right. All right, so that's a mythic. Are they gonna all have a mythic? No, they either have lucky. a mythic or well, I mean, you've drawn two. The average is one in thirty to get a mythic in a pack. Holy crap! So I'm doing pretty good then. If you get a third, you're super, super oh, lucky. Man, where... I put the uncommons back in the stack. Hold on, <laughs> that's gonna bother me. I'm sorry. Wait, did I put them in the stack? Is this the stack I was even looking at? I don't, I don't think know. it was. Okay. <sighs> or did I already put them together? Man. There they go. Open right. mine so much. No, you wait. I know. You wait, sir. I and we'll, we'll also be openings whenever we play online and get packs. So if you watch us play Magic online when we stream, you'll be able to see us play then. And I think Robert's going to try to stream that when he plays it. Yeah, the online stuff should be able to do that. Yeah. Caller the culprit for cost. Target destroy target creature with toughness of four or greater. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. I've seen someone tech to where they uh the the person had a uh, three three creature, they've cast something to give it plus one plus one and then they killed it. It was super gross. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> <clears throat>
All right, here we go. Um, this seems two cost. Human wizard, pass while adept, uh, pay three. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Yeah. It's a good it's a, support piece, sounds like. It's a four for a support. Uh, that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're depending on stuff being unblockable, that's super good. Yeah. That's a defender okay. and has surveil one when you put it out. Not bad. Okay. You can tell I know the set a little bit. <clears throat> Is this what you've been playing with online? Yeah. That in the corner. Uprising. Creatures you control gain death touch until the end of turn. Then target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Okay, so it just forces an attack and then all your opponent's characters die. Yep. I I like that. Uh, yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't seem like... A, oh, what does that do? Okay, direct current costs three, I guess. A one and then two little flames, two reds. Direct current deals two damage to any target. Then it says jumpstart. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs, then exile this card. So the jumpstart is a new thing from uh, from this set. Um, it's I don't like the sorcery speed because you have to do it on your turn. So this one's double sideways. It's, what does that it's mean? a pick. You, you pay a certain energy to do one thing, pay a certain energy to do the other, I believe. So they both have two different types of energies. Yeah. Not really. Search they have different energy costs, but one of them is a uh, one planes, one vegetable, as you say, and the other one is four and a vegetable and a planes. Okay, so you decide which one you want to pay, and yeah. that's what you're going to do. Yeah. Okay. But, all right. It looks so more elegant like... online. <laughs> All right, so Whispering Snitch, whenever you survey for the first time this turn, Whispering Snitch deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. Huh. That's a two... I saw someone talking about it, like, I don't want to do just one damage. That doesn't seem good. And I was like, that's that's a technical two-life swing. Yeah. And if you have multiple of them out... Too. Yeah, and if you have multiple of them out, dude, it's ridiculous. Yeah, all right. So I would just goblet. put the commons in one stack by themselves. Yeah, these are my uncommons. I'm gonna put move it over to this one or this pile. Are you keeping all your packs separate? Because you're gonna run out of room. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Like, are you putting oh. just the commons from one pack on one thing, and then putting the uh, the next pack you have commons and you put that in its own stack also? Yes. I would just start combining them, man. You got. Well, I have all the commons from this set in this pile right here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So Goblin ba Banneret. Mentor, whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one counter on attack on target attacking creature with lesser power. Mm -hmm. Pay one and one red. Goblin banner it gets plus two until end of turn. Yeah. So and it only costs uh, one to get in the field. Yeah. So mentor, if you do that and you uh, do the thing to give him plus two, he's going to be giving someone else plus one that's a lower attack than him. Nice. That's pretty good. Yeah. Right, we'll night go. of Autumn, that's a rare, so it's a creature, Dryad Knight. When Knight of Autumn enters the battlefield, choose one. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on Knight of Autumn. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, or you gain four life. Yeah, these are going to get very mouthy and wordy until we actually get <laughs> used to it. So that's a rare. Here goes another gate, Boros Guildgate oh, enters ben. the field. <laughs> and then I got an Elf Knight again. What's up, Ben? You guys still opening this garbage. <laughs> Ben's not into the magic at all. <laughs> not feeling the magic at all, Ben. All right, all right we'll try the to... magic, bro. Well, we just meant to start our thing at uh, this. So, yeah, we're about to start it. I haven't even opened my cards, Robert. Hurry up, God. Okay, let's speed through here. We'll just we'll just fly through some of these. Let's get to the uncommons at least, because I want to see what they do. Ooh, crawl crawl harpooner has reached. Chemistress Insight, Pilfering Imp. Uh, and you got that uh, Gil Mage's Forum. Yeah. And then the Skate and ooh Bird Illusion. That's pretty. Yeah. So rare. That's a land card. Uh, you can use it as uh, it's a universal land card. Noise. All right. All right. Next one. Oh, wait. Hold on. I put these in the wrong pa in the wrong pile. <laughs> 
I blame Ben for rushing me. I do too. Alright. <clears throat> Next. Oh my god. You should like rip your packs open so that they're ready to go. I was thinking about that, honestly. But I'm going to want to look at them right when I open them. Ooh. Fist and fist cyclops. That sounds awesome. Pitiless Gorgon. Death Touch. And these, are, these seem awesome. Yeah. I'm going to have to read them all later. The art on them is super good. Yep. Iron Shields. Iron Sheik? Shields. And my rare is one of these uh, double cards. One counter on target creature. That creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Uh, create three 2-2 two, two green and white elf knight creature tokens with vigilance. Noise. And then this gate and some elf knights. Alright, alright. Ibrick, Ibrick. Why are these packs so hard to open? Yu Gi Oh packs were a lot easier to open. Cosmotronic Wave! That's that a really good card. Is it? Deals one damage to each creature your opponent controls. Creatures your opponent's control can't block this turn. Oh wow, that is a good card. That's like uh, the one from Dice Masters. It's like Cloud Kill. There it is. I was trying to remember what it was called. I'm all opening right. all my things just to get them done. Nice. Ooh. Uncommon. A card. Okay. You got another mythic, dude. It's called Arc Light Phoenix. Oh, Flying haste. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've cast three or more instant and sorcery spells this turn, return Arc Light Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's a really good one. Will I actually be doing that many, though? You never know. I mean, you could build a deck around it. That's that's true. That's How many mythics is that already? I got three mythics. That's super good, man. And your planeswalkers count as mythics. Do they? Yeah. All right. Fire urchin. Trample. Intrusive Peck Beast. Alright, let's just go through some of these to the uncommons. Warm Guild Mage. Does it Elkite Whelp. Ooh, that sounds cool. It's a five cost though. Okay. Demir Spybug. Flying and Menace. Interesting. I kind of like that. Get another Mythic. Oh, no, it's a rare. My bad. <laughs> I got excited. Oh, is, that's a really good erratic cyclops is super good. Trample. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, erratic cyclops gets plus X plus zero until until end of turn, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So that means how much you paid to play it, right? Yeah. Nice. And then common Boros Gate, and then I got a token soldier with lifelink. Alright, getting there, getting there. Only four left. This is the fourth one. Fourth to last. Alright. Do, 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 do. Vicious rumors. Ooh, maniacal rage. Chant creature. Chant creature gets plus two, plus two, and can't block. Death touch. I do like that death touch thing, though. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I couldn't show the back of one of mine because it has a code on it, so. Oh, nice. Okay. Chant Thought Erasure. That sounds familiar. I think we already did that one, right? Uh, Flight of Equinox. Convoke. Your creatures you can help cast. Your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one. Pays one for one or one mana of that creature's color flying. Yeah, it's cost eight. Yeah, but you can use characters you control to cast it. Mm. Omni Spell Adept. So two in a water, and I guess tap. You may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. Kind of cool. 
Don't negate. And I got a goblin. Yep. Pretty cool. All right. <clears throat> get in there, get in there. Ooh, a healer's hawk. That sounds awesome. It's... Flying with lifelink. Yeah, super good. And it costs one? That's awesome. Dazzling lights. Oh, I see something foil in the background, in the back here. Oh, let's get to it. All right, let's go. Commons, 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 uncommon. All right. Is that, that looks like Nightcrawler from X-Men. Night Veil Sprite. Flying. Night Veil Okay, so that's not bad. Another <sighs> thingy. Sinister Sabotage. Counterspell. Mm, my rare is a Pelt Collector. Never another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies. If that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a plus one, plus one on Pelt Collector. As long as Pelt Collector has three or more plus one, plus one counters on it, it has Trample. Wow, that's really good. He only costs one, dude. Yeah. I mean, he's a one, one at start, so. Okay, here we go. It's a common foil crushing canopy. Eh. Choose one, destroy target creature with flying. Destroy target enchantment. Eh. Eh, so is foil not that great or something? Uh, it's just like in uh, Dice Masters. It can be a common, uh, uncommon, or rare. So, all right, all right. Got a bird illusion. Two more packs. God, you're slow. Sorry, dude. You're used to doing Dice Masters. <laughs> yeah. Well, we already know the card. Well, the thing is, I have never seen these cards before, so they're yeah. kind of taking me longer. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Uh, Might of the Masses, Sprouting Renewal, uh, Status and Statue. All right, my rare card is called Ionize. Or Spell card, Ionize deals two damage to that spell's controller. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Common, Boros, Guildgate, and Elf Knight. All right, last pack. Then y'all don't have to listen to me mumble anymore, and you can listen to Chris. How many uh, Mythics have you gotten? Three? Uh, three, I think. All right, here. I will. Let's hope for another one. All right, here we go. Uh, actually, I want I want to see the art on the cards. I'm sorry. It's just the way it's going to be, guys. Ooh, that looks cool. Yeah. All right, sorry, I got distracted. That's all right. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Gatekeeper gargoyle. Flying gatekeeper gargoyle enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each gate you control. Yep. What? So that's why oh, those gates gate cost six. Yeah, but he's generic six, so you can spend any energy. Oh, wow. That's pretty awesome. And if you Seven have a deck full of gates, you're good. Mm. First strike with Mentor. He only costs two. I like that. We mm -hmm. Dragon Outs again. That's a good card. Rare card is Vivid Renewal. Return up to three target multicolored cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Vivid Renewal. Is that good? It costs uh, five, though. You probably have to. It can be good. Is what I'm going to say. Then we have the gate, and then we have an elf knight token. All right. Okay. All right, man. Take it away. All right. I'll go as fast as I can. Uh, so first deck, Wish Coin Crab. And I'll just go over anything that I think. Uh, the Vedalkin Mesmerist, he's really good. Um, he gives uh, When he attacks, he gives something uh, minus two, minus zero. So basically, you can swing through without worrying about being killed. Um, got that. Why are you showing them on camera? I can't see them. Oh, sorry. And then <laughs> I got a rare card. It's a Fiend. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's return up to two target creatures cards from your hand, uh, from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh. And then the uh, finality. Uh, you may put uh, plus one, plus one counters on uh, a creature you control. Then all creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn. Nice. So. Then I got Guildgate Boros. It's a Guildgate. Um, and then I got Insect Token. What does that look like? I didn't get one of those, I don't think. Oh, yeah, I definitely didn't get one of those. I gotta separate the coin. Come on. Let me keep the lands separately. Land, land. Yeah. All right. Next one. forget to put it on the screen. Oh, sorry. That's it for commons. 
Wait. <laughs> Dude, that guy and that chick down there. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's hilarious. She's looking at me. Oh, God bless. It's hard to get these piles together. I'm trying to go fast. That's all right. Just slow it down. Slow right. down. So that's, got time. that's it for commons. Uh, beam splitter mage. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, only blame splitter mage. Uh, uh, that targets only blame splitter mage. If you control one or more other creatures, that spell uh, could target. Choose one of these uh, creatures. Copy that spell. This the copy targets the chosen creature. Okay. Uh, I got rare Arata the Silencer. She can't be blocked. Oh, Arata! Uh, she she uh, she can't be blocked. Whenever Arata uh, deals combat damage to player, exile target creature that player controls, and hit a uh, put a hit counter on that card. That player loses that the game if that. If they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. What? Arata's owner shuffles Arata into the library. So you attack with her, then put her uh, shuffle back into the deck. Wow. That that's, seems annoying. Is that a rare or mythic? That's a rare. Wow. And that's another common. That's kind of good. That's, that's, that's kind of good. And then I got a soldier token. All right. I'll do this one so you don't see it and think, wow. All right. Another Mesmer. That Barrier Bones seems good. Uh, is this a start of the... Yeah, this is the start of the uncommons. Integrity. Target cre... It's a... Uh, one cost is a uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two into a turn. And the two and a red and white intervention deals three damage to any target, and you gain three life. Okay, that's good. It's generic and common. Okay, this is a rare. Varinated Loxodon. Convoke. Um, so basically, you have you can pay with characters with it uh, when. Varirated Loxodon enters the battlefield. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that convoked. Whoa, that's pretty good. He's a four and a... What you call it? Uh, and a broccoli? No, and a sun. And oh. Then I got a foil goblin locksmith. Cool. It's <laughs> common. Nice. Um, got a Silesian Guildgate. And then I got that token, the bird token. I bird. got the bird. Bird is the word from what I hear. Yeah. All right. And then. All right. Come on. Uh, Justice strike. Target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Okay. Uh, that doesn't seem good. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is a murmuring mystic creature, wizard, uh, human wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a one-one blue bird illusion uh, creature token with flying. That's pretty good. That's what that token is needed for. Aw, I want that card. That's a pretty good card. Grappling it has flying. Sundew. Like doing that. So this is a defender with reach, and it's a zero four. And then uh, pay four in a broccoli grappling sundew gains indestructible until end of turn. That's super good. Um, and then the rare from the deck is uh, Legion War Boss. It has Mentor, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a one-one Goblin creature token. That uh, token gains haste until end of turn and attacks the, uh, with this combat. If uh... okay, so it attacks if it can. Ah, all right, another gate. Uh, got a Goblin with it, so noise. All right, going for this. All right, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Gotta Good. go fast. I'm believing you. Wall of Mist. I like defenders. I don't know why. I just like them. They're very defensive, though. Yeah. Tell me about it. Can't talk to them about nothing. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, Price of Fame. 
The spell costs two less to cast if it targets a legendary creature. And it's a three, uh, three generic and a black. So if you're targeting a legendary, um, you destroy target creature. What? And then surveil two. That's super good. That's super good. Um, and then this one is flower. Search your library for basic forest or plains card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand and shuffle your library. Then the expense, expensive one, uh, creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end of turn. I think that's good. Uh, I think you got Glow Spore Shaman. Not I don't go. remember. Yes. What's that? It's the Erratic Cyclops. Nice. That's a good one. All right. And then uh, I got uh, Guildgate. And then I got a Soldier Token. And then... I'm really kind of happy with the with the distribution in this. I think I can make a decent uh, deck. Nice. And then crawl harpooner. I think you got that. Yeah. All right. And then crush contraband. Uh, it's choose one uh, uh, or both. Excel target artifact. Uh, Excel target enchantment. Oh, that's a really good removal. So it's a three and a sun. Um, and then Legion Guild Mage. Three damage to each opponent. All right. And then I got a Mythic. Doom Whisperer. Flying, Trample, Pay 2 Life, Surveil 2. Whoa. That sounds awesome. It's a 6-6 six, six Flying with Trample, and you can pay 2 life to Surveil 2. That's super good. Holy smokes. That is super good. Just leaving that bad boy right now. Leave it good. And then Boros Guildgate. And then Elf Knight. I haven't seen that. It has Vigilance. Oh, that's super good. I'm saying super good about everything, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just a... Uh, just goes to show how little we know about which cards are really good. Yeah. Joe's going to be coming on and like, you guys are idiots. None of those cards are good that you talked about. Boros Challenger. I got that one already. Um... Ocarin Assassin, it has Death Touch. Ooh. All creatures able to block Ocarin Assassin do so. Whoa! What? That's like a... Uh, what's her name? It's like uh, Madam Web? Yep. Oh, that's super good. How much does it cost? It's a, uh, one generic and a, uh, a black and uh, green. Oh, that's super good. I... I... Give my stamp of approval on that one. <laughs> and then the connive, gain control of target creature with two power or less. Ooh. Um, concoct. Surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. That's good. That's the rare. Ooh. Book Devourer. I got a foil of it. Oh, nice. Uh, Is it like a common? No, it's uncommon. What? So trample whenever book devourer deals combat damage to a player, you may discard all the cards in your hand. If you do, draw that many cards. Okay. So if you need um, if you need hand uh, if you cards in your hand are garbage, you could just swing in with that. That's super good. All right, guildgate. And then a soldier token. This one I had to put face up because it has a to it has a card thing on the back. But the one on the back. Uh, oh. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So if I have this in my deck, it's an emblem. I don't know how this works. So Interesting. That's, if only we oh. had knew somebody that could tell us what it meant. Yeah. All right. Coming. All right. All right, Whispering Snitch, you saw that one. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like that. The It's a two-life swing. And yep. then Flight of Equinauts, Convoke. Yeah, we saw that one earlier. And then Sprouting Renewal. Mm -hmm. And then the rare is Amara, Soul of Accord. Whenever Amara, Soul of the, Soul of the Accord, it, uh, becomes tapped. Create 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. Oh, that's, that's really good. 
Right, so that goes over here. Yeah, I'm all about bringing in creatures and stuff like that. That sounds awesome. Yeah. All right. Second to last one? Uh, the second to last one, yeah. Let me... Oh, man. Swarm Guild Mage. Uh, so basically it's a one, uh, it's a black, uh, green creature elf shaman. Uh, so you, while it's in the field, you can pay four generic and a, a black and you tap it. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain menace until end of turn. Ooh. Or you can pay one generic and a green and you gain two life. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, the uncommon. There's nothing really crazy on there. There's just lava coil, Demir uh, spy bug. Uh, it's flying menace. Whenever you surveil, put a one one counter on Demir spy bug. Oh, that's super. That's kind of good. So if you build a uh, a surveil deck, you can do that. Uh, and then this one is ex uh, expansion copy target uh, instant or sorcery spell with a con converted mana cost of four or less. You may choose new targets for this uh, copy. Oh, so you copy. And then explosion deal X damage to any target uh target player draws X cards. Okay. That's uh Was that your rare? Yeah, that's my rare. And the guild gate. And then elf token. And my last alright. Gotta be mean to it. Have you got a mythic yet? I've gotten you got one, right? Yeah, the one. Nice. Alright. That's a land, generic land. Gateway enters the battlefield tapped when Gateway Plaza enters the battlefield uh, sacrificed it unless you pay one uh, generic. Okay. All right. That's it for the commons. Affectionate uh, Indric. When Affectionate Indric enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creature you don't control. Oh. So it's a 4-4, four, four, so you can knock something out pretty quickly. Nice. Uh, so already done invert. Selective snare. I think we've done that one. Hmm. All right. And then the rare is quasi-duplicate. All right. So create a to uh, token that's a copy. That's a copy of target creature you control. And then you could jumpstart it also. Jumpstart basically it's in your graveyard, but you can pay it one more time, so and you have to pay the mana and it discards a card. So yeah. Alright. I don't think I got any of the good guild gates, but I, I'm pretty happy with what I got, honestly. I think so too, because I don't know what's good and what's bad, so I have to be happy with what I got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but I do think that getting three mythics was good, right? Oh, dude, you got you, you made it like a fucking bandit. So, I hope so. Yeah. Um, got a lot of tokens. Um, I know I shouldn't be excited about the tokens, but I kind of am. Me too. Let me me see. too. I got that. Elf Knights. I got a lot of soldiers. Me too. Wait, what did I get? I got a lot of Elf Knights. Let me see how many I got. I got one, two, three... Uh, four, five, six, seven elf knights, two birds, two soldiers, and one goblin. Yeah. So I got one bird, five soldiers, so yeah. I got three elf knights, a goblin, and an insect, so. Nice. I think I did good. Alright, well, since I don't have anywhere to put any of these cards, I'm just going to go ahead and throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Um, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you will upset half the magic following, uh, half the magic players. The other half will be like, yeah, throw it away. It's it's garbage. It's garbage, man. All right. I got uh, this handy dandy carrying case. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to go pick that up tomorrow. Another video of op us opening packs. Yeah. Well, there's only what? Oh, there's ten in that thing, right? Yeah. Wowie. Uh, I see, really I... like what it comes with, so. Yeah, I see. I got two Demir 
guild gates. I got one, two, three, four, five Boros guild gates, one Golgari gold guild gate, and two Silasinia guild gates. Mm -hmm. So these can take the place of land cards in my deck, right? Yeah. How many land cards can you have? As many as you want? Uh, and you, if you look on the general instructions, it'll tell you how many you should have and how many uh, the range. You mean I gotta I gotta look that crap up? Is what you're telling me? It says it on the cards. You got two cards that come with it, so. <clears throat> oh, all right. Let's see. It doesn't say it on the two cards, dude. Oh. Who lies? Shit. Hold on. I think it's uh, if you're playing the the thing that we're going to be playing, it's going to be anywhere from twenty two to twenty four that you should. Okay. I'm calling. I'm calling. All right. Oh, and I also have this tokens from this other set that I can't use. Right, proven combatant and the cat. Yeah. They I like so that guy. Cool. I like the proven combatant. He's pretty awesome looking, man. Yeah. It'll probably come back, and you can use that token then. I'm sure, right? So they're they're all about redoing stuff all the time. So reprints are plenty in Magic, from what I understand. Nice. Meanwhile, someone's yelling at us like, "No, they don't." <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. That's proven. Okay, that's proven. I, I do like these. Uh, this full art land is pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm super jealous of that full art land. That's really good. Yeah. I want all my lands to be full art lands if I'm going to have lands. That's going to be expensive. You know that, right? I don't care. So. All right. Well, I'm going to end this stream for this magic opening stuff. And everyone's probably bored to tears with the magic stuff. So. Yep. Uh, um, so I enjoyed we're it. Gonna, are we going to come back with some Dice Master stuff here in a little bit? I got a match in 30 minutes. So. Oh. Well, so I guess so. Yeah. It's right. going to be determining who makes it in the top eight. So it's awesome. either going to reshuffle everything or it's just going to be status quo. Interesting. All right. All right. So talk to you guys later. All be right, back in 30 guys. minutes.